I'm Tina Hoy with Paolo Coin. We are the homepage of digital currency. Welcome to this week's Bitcoin Roundup. There is so much news. This week, there are updates from the country of Dominica, which is going to let the bit drop. Charlie Schrem, who pleaded guilty on Thursday, KNC Miner, and we've discovered that Mark Capellis has been up to a lot of things since the collapse of Mt. Gox. And you may not like it. And then, of course, we've got a brief update on the photo leaks with 4chan, Reddit, and Bitcoin all in the mix. So let's get started and dig in. This week, Bitcoin's price has dropped to $484 this morning. Some analysts are predicting that price to rise as high as $560 or dip as low as $340 to $360 if the price does not rise back up to at least $500 and stay steady, in which case a double bottom back could occur. The coming week is definitely looking like a volatile one that could place Bitcoin at $400 to $450 zone on the optimistic end as of now, unless something particularly positive happens. And we've got our fingers crossed, hoping that would occur. Because man, let's not let the Bitcoin price drop too low. We've got some quick updates and commentary regarding the celebrity photo leak that occurred earlier this week of more than 100 celebrities, including Jennifer Lawrence, Avril Lavigne, Ariana Grande, Kristen Dentz, and Selena Gomez, who have had their nude and intimate pictures leaked online by an anonymous 4chan hacker. The FBI are continuing their investigation of the hack and trying to find the hacker responsible for what is now being dubbed the fathening. But the anonymous hacker is still yet to be found or announced by his peers. So what does any of this have to do with Bitcoin? A 4chan hacker by the name of Original Guy is the closest hint to a responsible party. He claimed to be a collector and not a hacker of the images, but he did upload images of the photos in an anonymous message board on 4chan earlier this week. Then he asked members of 4chan if he could get donations in Bitcoin. He also asked for donations in PayPal, but a lot of sources were sitting here all week claiming that Bitcoin is at fault because it helped the hackers stay anonymous because Bitcoin is also anonymous. And so now he's anonymous because of Bitcoin and Reddit and 4chan and it's not true. Uh, we don't really think that that is actually a fair call, especially since he did request donations from both Bitcoin and cash from PayPal. I mean, how come PayPal is not going under the fire either? And ultimately, he also later resurfaced on 4chan and complained that he only was able to get about $120 in USD worth of Bitcoin for the photo. In either case, his identity is yet to be found. And meanwhile, the internet is astir with users of 4chan and Reddit haggling themselves over the images and continuing to propose trades and making Bitcoin offers and folks from all over the world making comments all over the web about this activity and the hack and trying to find who the hacker is and of course, nude photos. This is reminding everyone to be more careful about taking nude photos and their cloud security. And there's also a lot of questioning starting to occur about the ethics that surround anonymous internet usage. And who can really blame them? Trolling has become a little bit out of hand. Christopher Cheney leapt into the accounts of Scarlett Johansson, Mila Kunis, and other starlets back then was caught and sentenced to 10 years in prison. And it took the authorities quite a while to also track him down. Meanwhile, Robin Williams' daughter, Zelda, was tormented on Twitter until she shut down her account following her father's death on August 11th. Why? Because two users on Twitter apparently flooded her Twitter account with horribly manipulated images of Robin Williams while blaming her for the death of her father in a really, really hard time. So it's interesting and something to note that lately, bullying and ethics on the internet and the anonymity that goes along with it is coming to question. The trolls are making giant internet companies such as Twitter and Reddit to do a double take on whether or not they want to play a role where the ethics of internet users and trolling becomes a little bit too overreaching, much like the bit license. Come on guys, we can work together to make the internet way cooler, better, and amazing place to be. KNC Miner is up to some really great things lately. They launched in June of 2013 and reportedly made $70 million in revenue during its first year of semiconductor merchandising operations from selling Bitcoin mining equipment. But it seems they were not able to meet with quite a few customers' demand for the highly sought after hardware which was actually pretty hard to procure leaving many who pre-ordered dissatisfied with long wait times and seeking refunds. Fast forward to September 6, 2014 today, and the company are getting out of selling Bitcoin mining machines 
completely. And they're going to make things right to their customer. Some who pre-ordered equipment for thousands of dollars per unit in December, when Bitcoin was priced above $1,000, are still waiting on delivery of their KNC semiconductor boxes, even as the price of Bitcoin is now below $500. Yikes! That is not good for business. Uh, and so KNC Miner is putting together some steps to make do and do right by their initial customers. So they have announced that every one of the hundreds of people who requested a refund will be getting refunds. Talk about taking care of your customers. In addition to the refunds, KNC Miner has pivoted the business and has come up with a new way to serve Bitcoin customers. What they've done is built a vast data center, which consumes 30 megawatts of power in northern Sweden in the Arctic Circle. Why the Arctic Circle in Sweden? Because it's cold there. What many folks don't understand is that Bitcoin mining produces a ton of heat. It's really hot, even with just one miner in the room. And so it'll just heat up your entire apartment. You won't even need a heating machine anymore when it's winter. They chose the Arctic Circle because they needed cold air. And hence, you're able to produce a data center that is very efficient and has a little less cost overhead. Their KMT miner generates Bitcoin for itself as revenue and also has started leasing power to customers. Customers of Bitcoin can now go to their website and pay a fee to get a certain amount of compute power for a duration of time. The difference now is that customers get access to the mining equipment immediately, according to Cole, and it makes the math easier to do. That's excellent. Way to go on really putting your existing and future customers first. Good job, guys. Speaking of treating your customers right, let's now shift the conversation to Mark Capellas, the CEO of the now bankrupt Mt. Gox. Mark Capellas, the CEO of Mt. Gox, the Bitcoin exchange that Tank has apparently surfaced from hiding and it's being discovered that he's launched a new web hosting, transit, and VOIP service called Forever.net. In Mark Capellas' own words in an interview he recently had, Forever.net offers clustered backed VPS service with RAID 1 on top of RAID 2 physical storage with hot spare drives on standby. Their website seems to have appeared on May 17th, 2014. Carpellis, in an interview with News BTC, is quoted in saying that he could go into more technical details but is not sure if that's what everyone wants. Hold on, wait a second, hang on, stop right there. Mr. Capellas, a few very angry customers who trusted Mount Fox want to know something. It's pretty important. Where is their money? I personally have friends and have met quite a few people who have been affected by the collapse of Mt. Gox directly. And we have to be honest, Mt. Gox is being listed as one of the major reasons why they definitely lost confidence in Bitcoin as a direct result of how Mt. Gox handled, or rather, shall we say, avoided handling what happened in a manner which was respectable, transparent, or even communicated at all. Come on, guys. Can you please at least address your past customers who are still sitting here wondering what the heck is going on before you start a new venture? This is definitely not a good way to establish trust or confidence in your endeavors. Going back to Forever.net, which is registered under both Carpellis' name and that of Tabing, which is the parent company of Mt. Gox. And get this, the new entity, Forever.net, is apparently the only business Carpellis is willing to speak about. It's like the entire Mt. Gox thing, man, I mean, you know, no big deal. It's like it never happened. Who cares that all these people are trying to figure out where their money is? Let's just start something new. It is in question whether or not Mark Capellas was actually responsible. As far as anyone knows today, the collapse of Mt. Gox was caused by an alleged theft of roughly 850,000 bitcoins, which is a ton of money of which 200,000 BTC were discovered and recovered from an outdated wallet following the collapse that Mt. Gox apparently restored to some of its customers. But that still leaves a giant gaping hole of mystery surrounding where the rest of the 850,000 bitcoins went. Seriously, it will probably make everybody feel a little bit better and believe that you are actually learning from your mistakes if Carpellis and Tabane and Mt. Gox were to issue statements that actually address and give back bitcoins possibly that were lost, or at least find some way to truly explain the technical details regarding what have happened with Mt. Gox and candidly address their former customers' inquiries and concerns, or else this is 
definitely going to get uglier for Carpellis. Especially since Tobain is also, according to him, considering accepting Bitcoin and Litecoin and other altcurrencies. But people really just want some answers and not just a lot of deference. On to lighter news. The Bit Drop project is a go. Let the Bit Drop is going to occur in early 2015, which is named Dominica, the Caribbean country with over 70,000 residents as the recipients of what the CEO of Coinapult has shared to be at least $10 in USD worth of Bitcoin per island resident, scheduled to occur on March 14th of 2015 via SMS text message. Why Pi Day? It seems Pi Day was selected in order to acknowledge the significance of Pi to mathematics and how it released a lot of knowledge, which is kind of what Bitcoin is doing with currencies and digital currencies, what the internet can do in the future of money. On Pi Day 2015, Coinapult Aspen Assurance and the Bitcoin Beauties will be throwing a full island party called the Bit Drop for the entire Caribbean nation. The Bit Project is actually partnered with two major telecom companies to deliver the Bitcoins via SMS through Coinapult to what the project is calling the first Bitcoin nation in the world. Their goal? To create the world's largest and highest density Bitcoin community on the planet. The CEO of Coinapult, Ira Miller, has met with Dominica's Minister of Environment and Physical Planning, Dr. Kenneth Daru, to collaborate positively with the nation's government for this educational eco economy experiment. We can't wait for the big party and we'll definitely be following the story to see what happens. When you give everyone in a country on an island some Bitcoin and they start using it. Possibly daily. Now a brief update from the New York Federal Court. Charlie Shrum has pleaded guilty this week on Thursday, September 4, 2014 in New York to one count of illegally helping a new a dealer sell a million dollars worth of Bitcoin in USD to customers on Silk Road. The now infamous black market of Bitcoin that has been shut down where anonymous users used to be able to buy and sell contraband and drugs. Charlie Schramm, who was chief executive officer of BitInstant and vice president of the Bitcoin Foundation, stepped away from both of those roles after his indictment on January 2014. Charlie Schramm's plea deal means that he could circumvent going to trial on more serious charges of money laundering and violations of the Bank Secrecy Act, but he is still looking at what could be five years in prison. Silk Road dealer Robert Faea, alias BTC King, also pleaded guilty Thursday to operating an unlicensed money transmitting business that knowingly sent money to a criminal enterprise. He also can be sentenced to five years in prison. Both men will be sentenced on January 20th. And we at Follow the Coin believe in bridging communities, ideas, people, thoughts, technology, Bitcoin, digital currencies. And we really want to stand behind a troll-free environment as well. And we hope you'll join us. Because the internet is awesome. It's freedom, it's access, it's endless possibilities. And it would be way cooler if we could all stay free, transparent, anonymous, and help each other out in shaping a brighter and better future.